thanks for joining for today's presentation. A um, bit of background about myself. So my name is Rob. I work for Smart Recruiters. I'm a v uh, regional vice president. Uh, I spent seven years as a headhunter many moons ago and then spent the last 15, 16 years working for technology vendors, um, one of which we grew from about 11 employees to 700 globally. So I've been through the pain of scaling a company as well as obviously building some war stories from working within this space. Prior to joining Smart Recruiters, I worked at Success Factors for two years. So I actually worked for a, <clears throat> a global company working on probably some of the largest HR transformation projects which have taken place over the last two or three years. So if any of you are familiar with HSBC and the fact they ripped and replaced PeopleSoft, which had been in for 14 years, uh, I had a little part to play with that. So I was uh, hired here at Smart Recruiters, no problem, by Jerome, the CEO. And, you know, I'm here today because I'm just super passionate about recruitment and recruitment technology and how it can actually help companies achieve some meaningful business outcomes. So in, in terms of sort of starting off at a high level, I want to start off talking about digital transformation. Um, you know, it's the catalyst for today's session. And not a day goes by that I don't hear about some industry being disrupted or the need to go and transform what they're doing. You know, whether it's, you know, e-commerce, whether it's cashier, less retail stores, whether it's, um, you know, digital printers in manufacturing. There's a huge amount of change going on across the marketplace. But, but what is it exactly? Well, the, uh, the first thing is, you know, this is a fairly significant business change that's all around us. So IDC have quantified that the digital transformation marketplace will be roughly sort of equating to about $2 trillion in the next couple of years. And if you, if you go and ask Gartner or, you know, one of the other people who sort of spend their time sort of looking at markets, this is how they quantify um, digital business transformation. So it's about taking new technologies or digital technologies and applying it to drive um, different sort of business outcomes from your organization. So it's real, it's happening, and it's probably happening in your company right now. Because the research uh, which you see on the slide says roughly three quarters of organizations are probably doing some form of digital transformation as we speak. Some are further on that journey than others, but just about everybody is uh, obviously having to have a look at that. And a chap called Brian Kopp, who's the group vice president at Gartner, um, basically said that you know, this technology evolution is really transforming the way companies run their businesses. But to date, I've yet to see a talent acquisition or a recruitment resourcing function, however you label yourselves internally, driving this type of digital transformation or this agenda. But, you know, perversely, you know, you and the people in this room are the people who are responsible for hiring the people to make this change happen. So, you know, there's a big shift and there's a lot of impact happening across this business. And, you know, what we're seeing is that, um, you know, recruitment is, you know, having to change. So there's a lot of volatility in hiring. So, you know, when I was a headhunter, things were, you know, they were up and down, but we're seeing much bigger peaks and troughs in, in terms of recruitment now. Uh, if you are changing the market that you're playing in, you know, if you're going, you know, from a manufacturer into, you know, a new segment, you need to hire new skills. And what's also happening is it's just taking longer to find this talent. So this sort of volatility, the changing skills, elongated uh, time to hire is, you know, is, is really driving organizations to, to adapt. So the strategies that we're seeing in the marketplace are evolving. Um, the first really is kind of almost like how we used to recruit. It's this sort of reactive uh, requisition driven hiring. But what's changing is the, the sort of the volumes and the net that you need to spread to get the right hires is exponentially larger than it's ever been before. Either through design, that you're actually broadening your net, or just because people have access to more data and uh, more access to jobs than with things like Google for Jobs. So the solution there is, you know, how do we automate? Yeah, we can't suddenly go and hire another 50 recruiters to handle this volume. We need to get smarter. The next one is around proactive. So if you're up in Manchester a few months back, I was talking about sort of requisition or reactive recruitment moving to a more proactive model. 
So if you are looking to evolve, if you are looking for these new skills, if you haven't had the experience of hiring these skills, you need to start nurturing and building relationships with a totally new segment of people. So what we're seeing is this sort of high value hiring, this relationship building um, recruitment taking place. And again, there's tools and technologies out there in the marketplace which, which help you do this effectively, such as CRM, for example. The third pillar really is around predictive hiring. So if you're starting to, you know, to be proactive, you're gathering more data, not just the old data, is, you know, are you able to actually make intelligent decisions and start planning more into the future about the types of people that you want to hire? And you know, it's becoming very candidate-centric. So by that I mean, you know, unless you've got deep relationships with these candidates, they're just blinded by brands and availability of other roles online. You know, how do you make sure that you're front and center with the right types of people that you're looking to hire? So if the methods are changing, you know, how is technology helping? And the, the short answer is it may not be. Um, <laughs> there's, there's many cases where legacy technology is actually holding companies back from sort of real, real innovation. Uh, recruiters are hamstrung with outdated solutions. And you know, many of the tools which have been in place for a number of years are quite cumbersome by today's sort of modern standards. They certainly fail to engage, which is really losing the battle. So the other, the other challenge with these older technologies, and you know, by these I mean you know, the Taleos. If you're not familiar, Taleo was Recruitsoft back in 1999. Some of you may be on Taleo. Um, you know, it is a legacy platform. Brass Ring, Connects are now part of IBM. Again, it was kicked off 19 years ago. If you can think back, if you're old enough to think back to, to that sort of period as I am, you know, how has recruitment changed over the last 19 years? A lot. So that recruitment technology has, of course, been developed and changed, but it was built for a totally different era. And, you know, the Taleos, Oracles, um, you know, the Connexas, you know, they're, they're really struggling to support the business in, in the modern era. So they're having to build new technologies, acquire new technologies, and, you know, it's creating, you know, creating a challenge. So if you're a TA leader, you know, what, what does this mean? Um, you know, it's clear if you look at the relationship between recruitment and the C-suite and the business leaders is clear that the pressure's mounting, okay? Um, you know, CEOs want to know how you, recruitment, are going to help transform their business and make them ready for the next five years. And, you know, this innovation is, is you know, goes way beyond, you know, just changing a system. You know, you need to be thinking about much, much sort of broader things. So, so how does TA support um, the business needs. And it's probably easiest to sort of start off with what, what isn't digital transformation, because for some of you, this might be a fairly sort of new vernacular. So as I've said, you know, the first thing is it's not just about lifting and shifting an ATS to move to a talent acquisition suite. And I'll explain more a little bit later. It's not about moving your candidates off one database and then into the cloud which again, some people will tell you is transformation, it's not. It's not about buying another point solution. Perhaps on your legacy platforms, you've got some major challenges around reporting. It's fairly common. Reporting is a difficult area. But by adding Tableau, which does some really nice visualizations of data, unless you've got the expertise internally and the data sets and you use it properly, it's not gonna solve your problem. And finally, you know, just uh, relabeling yourselves as agile isn't transformation. I wish it was. Yeah, you need, you need to do a little bit more than that. So, um, you know, so let's, let's sort of be clear on, you know, the sort of the definition around innovation. Um, and this is, this is um, gleaned from Forbes. And they, they say innovation is about being more agile. It's about being more insightful. It's about being more integrated and open. So these are really wholesale changes which may feel uncomfortable right now staring on screen. You may have already started on this journey, but these are the sorts of things that recruiters and heads of TA need to start thinking about to ensure that you're partnering with the business uh, in the way that the business wants you to partner with them. So let's have a look at some of the areas which can drive transformation. 
So we sort of labeled this as sort of a, a, new, a new framework for TA. Um, the first is around ensuring that you're using intelligence, you know, that you're, you're, you're looking at the tools and technologies which can help you automate, which can help you sort of drive um, down the manual process steps so you can focus more on the value-added services. The second one is, you know, with all these tools and technologies, I mean, there's been a great uh, case study I was reading this morning about LinkedIn uh, being slapped in terms of the public profiles and the access to data. Okay, this is big. This is a big topic with GDPR uh, last year. But, you know, there is huge amounts of data at your disposal. Um, and, and the key is taking this data and actually making it useful. Okay. Most people, they collect data or they come to us and they ask about reporting or want to be able to report on things. My next question is why and what are you going to do with it? And quite often it's not thought through. So, you know, you need to harness data and you need to make it actionable. And the third piece is really around ensuring that you don't go stale on these legacy systems. You know, familiarity, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of people, you've been trained, you're using platforms, you've been recruiting a certain way, you've worked for the business for some time, you know, you, you kind of get into a sort of a, a nice, successful mode of operation. But what we're seeing is huge market disruption. So what works yesterday doesn't necessarily work today. So the tool sets that you've invested in, yes, and we see this a lot as a vendor, we see a list of requirements, and you look at it, and, I, and I, my feedback to the people who are looking to buy technology is, everyone's going to answer yes to this. You know, you're, you're not going to be any further forward. This looks like you're trying to recruit or, or buy technology for today. And it means that in next year and the year after, you're going to need to change the technology. Where, where are the sort of the transformation? Where are you looking to evolve and really change and differentiate the way you do things? Okay, so that, you know, working with a solution which has a plug and play approach, which gives you some agility uh, is, is really key. So, you know, what, what is definitely certain is change is constant. And I want to talk about, you know, what we're seeing in terms of some of the responses from you and your peers in the marketplace. Um, the first one, and again, you know, apologies if you saw my presentation up in Manchester a few months back, because I'm going to talk about the recruitment funnel, but this recruitment funnel, this concept, um, think of it as a marketing funnel, which is how recruitment is evolving, yeah? It's gone to the days of kind of like you get a wreck, you stick an ad in a paper, you sift responses. Um, it's now moving to a much more heavy lifting at the top of the funnel type approach. You're needing to spend more, more time, uh, more money, building attraction strategies, you know, and engaging with people and nurturing them. And there's, you know, there's great anecdotes, there's great research that your peers have done, you know, the Virgin Media one in terms of NPS. You know, Graham did the same thing at BT, looking at the... Uh, at the interview process, and poor interviews at BT were costing them 10 million pounds a year. Okay, relationship, this is the constant. So the old way of working, you know, where you sort of did a little bit of work up front and then the bulk of the heavy lifting was in the recruiter screening and selection, we're now seeing that people are having to devote more time, more attention, more money to this top of funnel. You know, how do we actually go and find the people that we need? And this is driving a whole sort of new type of market conversation. So the way in which recruitment teams are being structured is changing. And also, of course, as I've mentioned, the way in which we recruit is evolving. So we're seeing um, you know, a significant change. And not everybody is as advanced on this sort of change process as others. But this move from reactive recruiting, so job spec lands on your desk, you go out, you advertise, you sort, sift, select, hire, to yeah, we're ahead of the curve, we're nurturing talent communities, we're building relationships, we're thinking about where the business is going in 12 months' time, two years' time. The most advanced I've seen is five years out. Beyond that, it's just absolute fiction. But how many of you are thinking about planning that, that, sort, of, that sort of far out? The, the reality is most people don't. You might have a conversation at the beginning of the year, you know, if, if, you're, if you're super advanced, you might be using, you know, Horsefly and getting some sort of market data before you actually make your plans to open a new call center in Birmingham or Bristol. Okay, but most companies, they kind of make these decisions and then they pass the problem to recruiting. Right, go and find 100 people by yesterday, please. Okay, and the only way you're going to do that is to make this shift from this sort of reactive to more proactive 
type approach. So in terms of sort of following this thread of technology, the other thing that we're seeing, um, and it's a shift which is happening, is this sort of desire to move from a spaghetti junction setup. And I'm very aware that some of you in the room may not have any technology supporting your recru recruitment practice. Okay, it's not a given, um, but it's certainly an enabler. But at the other end of the scale, larger organizations perhaps have acquired businesses. They've deepened, you know, they've added a CRM on top of a disparate ATS. They've got an assessment provider, a video interviewer. Half the business is on Workday, the other half is on SAP success factors. I mean, we see this quite a lot. And it creates a major, major headache. And, you know, when you look at this, you know, they're poorly integrated. Um, you know, there's a huge reliance that recruitment has on IT. And guess what? IT are fairly busy doing all the other transformation stuff for all the other parts of your business as well. And, you know, the outcome of a model like this is you're just not going to be able to get hold of the data. So if we go back a few slides thinking about the pillars, you know, can I get my hands on the data to start making informed decisions? No chance. It doesn't happen. You can go and spend a, a load of money building a reporting data repository, aggregating all this data. Yeah, or, you know, you could take a move and start consolidating. So we're beginning to see this. And this is a really cyclical marketplace. So it starts off with best of breed recruitment technology. Then, and this is in my career, became full suite. You know, success factors now, and I won't name names, but I'm speaking to a prospect globally who's been on SAP plus a talent management vendor with multiple modules, and they're going to market, and they're going to market for best of breed in every area because they're saying modern technology integrates. We want the best solution for recruiting, the best solution for learning. We're not going to compromise by going down the sweet route. So, you know, this type of conversation. If you're struggling to get budget, if you're struggling to engage with stakeholders internally about why recruitment needs investment, just talking about this simplification, this model, this removing of complexity, begins to resonate and make sense with CIOs. And we, and we, you know, we'd be happy to sort of help you with those types of conversations. So, you know, this, this, is, this is now, this is happening. Um, this is a great quote. Um, you know, from um, every, every year um, over in San Francisco, Smart Recruiters holds a hackathon. And by that I mean our customers bring their ideas and they sit down with our developers and they build stuff in 24 hours. And then they stand up on stage and they present what they built and we give a price. And then we take the good idea and we put it into our roadmap. <coughs> so this, this quote actually came from the 2019 winner. So earlier this year in February, a company called Optimizely over in the States. And you know, they built a really cool productivity enhancement using our open API, which means in effect they kind of extended our functionality, kind of just added something on top of what we're doing. And the key message here is you know, recruitment needs to be agile. How many of you today could take an idea, work with your vendor, and get something in Sandbox ready to show your boss within a week? And I'm not saying that we'll be able to do that for everybody. But it's just having the capability. Most companies, even if they had people to throw at it, the architecture and the technology doesn't allow it. It's a black box. It's somebody else's code. So I know I'm getting a bit geeky here, but this is about agility and you know, how, you, how you support your business. So let's, let's look at some other innovations. Um, this, this is a great one. So some of you in the room work for some fairly big brand RPO um, type organizations, and they're, they're probably having this conversation. But, you know, those companies are doing really, really high volume, or those organizations who are RPO providers supporting companies who need to hire at very high volumes are looking to automate the process as much as possible. And there's good reason for that. Number one, candidates get bored. Yeah? If they can't get into the process, get in and interviewed and in and out quickly, they leave. Um, if you're offering a service to companies to higher volume and you're using a high amount of resources which you're having to pay, it's expensive and you're not going to win business. So this, this vision to automate recruitment is real. Um, it's been talked about for about three or four years and we're beginning to start seeing it dropping into reality right now. 
So in most places, um, most um, opportunities that I've seen, it's about automating through to interview. So doing all that sort of initial early stage up. Some forward thinking people, because of their business, where they are geographically located, are actually looking to take this all the way through to hire, which will be slightly more difficult, but people are already looking at that. So they're looking at this sort of stack of technology and they're basically saying, with the right partners, with the right platform, with the right process, we can automate. And guess what? It frees up the recruiter's time to spend getting and building deep relationships with the people that matter. Okay? So, you know, this, this, this is a reality. You know, there, you know it's, it's happening today. It's a wholesale change. It's clearly a digital transformation in terms, of, uh, in terms of recruitment, it's harnessing the technology, you know, it's creating a new capability, which I referenced earlier with the Gartner, Gartner quote. So um, let's move away from this fairly hypothetical, because I can't, for NDA purposes, go any deeper. Let's talk about something which is quite innovative, which hopefully you'll recognize, which is McDonald's. So love them or hate them, everybody knows McDonald's. You may or may not eat their product. Uh, you may have worked there at some point in your life. Um, and you know, there's a great there's a great story here with uh, with McDonald's with us in Canada. So they are, um, you know, it's Canada. They have got about 1,100 stores. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, Canada has a National Hiring Day, which was a new concept to me a couple of years ago. Literally, one day per year, they go and hire five or six hundred people. It's crazy but it means they can plan for it, candidates are ready for it, and there's a huge flurry of activity. Um, what happened, we, we rolled out smart recruiters with McDonald's, everything was going fine, um, un, you know, unbeknown to us, they went and struck a deal with Snapchat, because they were having major issues actually attracting the talent they need. So this concept of a MOOC job, or this sort of rite of passage that we have here in the UK about you know, when we're at school or college, whatever, you know, getting a few, uh, few pennies in, flipping some burgers at McDonald's, over in Canada, they're struggling to hire their demographic because they're off doing Just Eat and Uber and Deliveroo. They've got huge competition for these sort of you know, ad hoc ways of earning some money. So they decided to tie up with Snapchat, um, and they decided to run a huge Snapchat campaign. Then they went, ah, how are we going to track this? How are we going to turn this into hires? So it's a little bit the tail wagging the dog. Marketeers went off crazy, going, yeah, we know. Let's go cool. Let's go with Snapchat. And then they had a bit of a problem. Um, unfortunately, they picked the phone up to us. And they said, look, um, horses bolted. This is happening. We've got our ATS and the CRM over here. We've got Snapchat over there. We didn't really think about how we brought the two things together. So um, it took us about 10 days. We knitted it together for them. It's not straightforward. But uh, they were able to drive enormous volumes through Snapchat and actually get all of the data into smart recruiters and match those candidates to the vacancies that they had across Canada. Okay, And if anybody wants more details on this, I'm happy to dive into a little bit more detail. But the Snapchat thing was as simple as you pick up Snapchat, and it had a McDonald's picture. You could see what you, what you looked like in the uniform. You took a photo. That was the start of your application process. There were some other cool things that happened in between. But ultimately, um, ultimately it ended up with um, all of their hires were made. And it was as simple as snap, you're hired. And these guys, you know, it touched, it did touch over here. But over in the States and in North America and Canada, this was massive news. Nobody had done it before. It was simple. You want to target the younger generation, you go and operate and start marketing and you know, a, a, you know, put your brand where they're hanging out, which at the time was, was Snapchat. So you know, they made their first hires in 48 hours, and it's also helped us sort of deepen our relationship with McDonald's globally. So we're on an ongoing mission to take this innovation, one innovation at a time, and see if it applies elsewhere in the world. Another one, which is... Um, fairly interesting and a totally different end of the spectrum is our friends over at Bosch. So I don't know what it's like at your house, but I've got a Bosch kettle. I did have a Bosch lawnmower until I left it out in the rain. Um, but you know, Bosch makes things. You have Bosch windscreen wipers on your car. 
And you know, this is a very Germanic business. They're 400,000 employees. They're in 200 countries around the world. They've been on SAP forever, but their business was changing. And their business was changing because fridges now need to communicate with shops to buy more milk. This whole internet of things is out there. And Bosch builds things which now need to become smart. So if you ever go over to Stuttgart, where I went, you know, you, you're taken into the canteen, it's blue collar, people are wearing their overalls, they're building stuff. And then I got whizzed off to another little suite and they're, they're talking about the future of, you know, Internet of Things. And they needed to hire 25,000 Internet of Things engineers in a very, very short space of time. And they looked at their incumbent technology and the aha moment was that somebody who they would love to hire so a recent graduate in computer science, you know, first degree whiz kid, tried to apply for a job at Bosch and gave up after 45 minutes, told his dad, who happened to be the chief operating officer of Bosch, who told the CHRO, you're screwed because my son is exactly who we should be hiring, and guess what? He will never work for Bosch if that's our candidate experience. So long story short, Bosch had to innovate, they needed to transform, they went and picked us back in 2016, when we were very green, very new. But they loved the fact that we thought about candidate experience, collaboration, and productivity in three pillars. And we've helped them achieve their, uh, their, their business results. And the final one is Colliers. And I'm a bit cheeky, because Mo, who's the EMEA Head of Transformation, is, is pretty much on stage tomorrow talking about part of this. But I sat down with him yesterday down in George Street in London, and they've been on smart recruiters for some time. They had no ATS. They rolled it out within three months across 11 countries. They're getting some tremendous results, blah, blah, blah. But what really caught my attention yesterday was, have a look at this. We built an app on a phone for our C-suite using the data from smart recruiters, basically answering our top 10 questions and visualizing to the people who've got zero attention span how successful we've been. And I said, do you mind if I nick that and show that at uh, the conference tomorrow? So they, they saved about $1.3 million since launch. They've been launched, you know, sort of about 10 months. They don't hire massive volumes, but they hire big ticket people and they spend a lot of money. Yeah, this is, this is huge. And this is an example of how you can sort of leverage the right platform. So to sort of wrap up, you know, it's about business outcomes. It's a, you know, we believe passionately it's about ensuring that you are successful in hiring. So we have this sort of phrase of hiring success. And you can see on the screen what we mean by that. If I peel it back a bit further, whilst I work for a technology vendor, I'm long enough in the tooth to know that technology is not the be all and end all. So if you're thinking about changing, if you're thinking about how you evolve, you need to think about the people you have in your teams, the skill sets, and also the processes. And it's those three things that come together which will help you be successful. Of course, having a platform or a partner which can support you on your journey is important. So this is kind of a, a architecture of, of smart recruiters. The key thing is it's all wrapped up in a very engaging uh, candidate experience. And the things that we, you know, we think are really important for organizations and the sort of things that I would um, suggest that you look out for if you're looking to move providers is, first of all, look at somebody who's thinking ahead of the curve. They're helping automate. You know, they're bringing intelligence into the solution. A vendor who's going to help you make better decisions. Okay, so that, that sort of that data. So you can actually do something with the, the data and make good decisions. And it needs to be open. I've said this a few times, and this might take a little while for the penny to drop, but um, to, to give you an example, we've got a customer who takes our platform and they've integrated it with 10 disparate technologies. Okay? Prior to doing this, it was a logistical nightmare. Logging into different systems, data was lost, no clear line of sight what's happening, couldn't answer those 10 business questions that Colliers can now answer, for example. And this is kind of what it looked like. So again, not everybody is at, is, is at this sort of space in terms of maturity or, or, or sort of breadth of solutions. But through the use of the right platform, and there are other platforms, but through the right platform, it's about how do you knit this together and actually you know, ensure that you 
deliver value to the business and don't lose sight of the fact that it's not just about hiring, it's about partnering with your business. So with Smart Recruiters, um, we've got a marketplace of about 600 pre-integrated technologies. Some of those providers are here outside today. So, you know, if you invested and worked with us, you've got plug and play partnerships, which makes your life a lot easier. And I talked about the developer API as well, in terms of being able to uh, build on top of our solution. And the phrase that I, you know, if I was sitting down presenting to an organization, or they were thinking about making a move, you know, my one takeaway, apart from everything I've said before, is don't invest in a technology cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac doesn't mean a lot outside of the UK, but I'm sure you'll get it. I see a lot of very short-sighted investments happening in the marketplace right now, which is fine if you know that it's a short investment. But you need to be thinking about, you know, don't move from Taleo to Brass Ring. You know, don't move from a legacy platform to another legacy platform. You might save some money, it might fix one or two things, but it's not going to help you transform. So, Hopefully that's been insightful and prompted a few thoughts. Um, we're over on, on stand 17, so come and see us. We'll show you on our mobile phone or do a demo or just get back in touch with it at a later date to talk about what we can do. We love hearing the stories, understanding the challenges you're facing. You know, we are here to help. Um, but today, you know, hopefully it's been uh, you know, a little bit of a, a different sort of thing to think about in terms of transformation.